Today, we have to listen to D-Marble talk at us. We're going to talk sticks and shadows, and I've got a live cross to our reporter in South America. Let's go. D-Marble made a video called The Parable of the Party. He talks about not trusting science and brings up Eratosthenes, the ancient Greek scientist. He's suggesting his experiments are invalid because they happened 2,000 years ago and to be considered second-hand information. So how long are you going to play this game? How long are you going to sit here and go off of this second-hand information? And this is what we deal with. We deal with people who are willing to take the information from secondhand sources to deny their own senses, their own common sense. You're experiencing this earth as flat and stationary, but you're still wanting to go off of information from a guy that's been dead for 2,000 years? What? But you're still wanting to go off of information from a guy that's been dead for 2,000 years? But it was getting good. I was just at the part where Noah is an alcoholic. His son finds him drunk, naked and passed out in a tent. And when Noah wakes up, he's so angry that he puts a curse on his grandson, making him a slave. Anyway, Daryl, what science do you trust? I mean, if you or a loved one falls ill, will you trust the science that cures them? You walk into an aeroplane. What are the science that keeps it in the air? How do you decide what science to trust? What criteria do you use? So Daryl doesn't trust science based on personal needs. But can you trust D Marble? Where's the curvature? Well, Eratosthenes did the experiment with the sticks and shadows and all that. Sticks and shadows? Haven't you heard that Neil deGrasse Tyson even admitted on camera that that experiment will work just the same on a flat earth with a small local sun? Didn't you hear about that? Hmm. D. Marble is deceiving you. He wants his followers to think Eratosthenes was trying to prove curvature. He wants them to think that Neil deGrasse Tyson admitted that his experiment could not prove round earth. And his sycophant followers lapped his stuff up. 2000 years ago, Eratosthenes wasn't trying to prove the earth is round. He already knew that. His experiment was an attempt to calculate the earth's circumference. That, Daryl, you can do with only two sticks and shadows. And he did do that with remarkable accuracy for the time. No scientist ever said you can prove the round earth with two sticks and shadows. But D. Marble wants you to believe that. So what did Neil deGrasse Tyson say about proving curvature? Let's find out. So now if the Earth is round, how big is Earth? Mm -hmm. You might want to check for that. There was a famous experiment conducted by Eratosthenes. How can we use this observation to see if Earth's surface is curved? We needed another well. Turns out we can't see the bottom of both wells at the same time. What might explain this? Well, there are two possible explanations. First, we could have a flat Earth with the sun that's small and close by so that the light hits the second well at an angle. Or second, we could have a curved Earth with a sun that's big and far away so that all the light comes in parallel, but only one well at a time is lit all the way to the bottom. Turns out with just two wells, there's enough wiggle room for both explanations to fit our observations. So D. Marble was right. He did say that. Why, Neil deGrasse Tyson, why? But is it possible D. Marble was maybe not telling the whole story? Let's continue the video. Turns out with just two wells, there's enough wiggle room for both explanations to fit our observations. Eratosthenes only had two wells. But what if he had added a third? With a third well, it doesn't matter where the sun is. No flat Earth model can explain the angles of all three shadows. But the spherical model explains it all. All three angles with ease. Oh, D Marble. You left that bit out.
it took me a couple of minutes to fact check that. So either you're going off secondhand information and not checking your facts, or you knew about it and you left it out because it doesn't fit your narrative. So Daryl, that makes you either incompetent or a liar. Anyway, since we're talking about sticks and shadows, I want to tell you about a giant stick you can visit yourself. And it disproves the sun circling around the Earth model. Let's cross to my reporter in South America to explain. Hello, Maria. Go ahead. Es uno de los que pasa la línea que al planeta en dos hemisferios. Speak English. El Ecuador es conocido como el país de la mitad del mundo. I don't speak German. Ecuatorial pasa también por otros países de América, África y Asia. So she was talking about the Quetzalcoatl sundial in Ecuador. This giant sundial sits on the equator. There, on the equinoxes, you, you can observe the sun rising in the east, travelling straight across the sky and setting in the west. At midday, there's no shadow because the sun is directly above. And during the day, the shadows are either pointing directly east or directly west. So basically, the sun has travelled in a dead straight line for 12 hours. How is that possible on a flat earth, with the sun travelling in a semicircle over 12 hours? So go there, make the observations, use your own senses, do the research. The only conclusion you'll come to is that your model sucks. Daryl, the Earth is a sphere. You know, like your name. 